Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at queues. We're going to look at the, it's an abstract data type called a queue, and we're going to look at how to implement it using an array. So I guess everybody here knows what queues are about, because we've all been there. You stand at the back, you wait until you get to the front, and then you get served at the front. So that's a, a, a simple queue there. That's a... Hmm, it's a monster queue there or something like that. Okay, so the, a monster queue. The principle is the same. The dragon comes in at the back, but the dragon or gargoyle at the front has to get served first. That's the principle of a queue. We call that principle FIFO or first in, first out, F-I-F-O. So if I join the queue first, then I'm the first person to get served. If you join the queue next, then you're the next person to get served. Whoever is at the front of the queue is the person who gets served. As we can tell, it's the opposite of a stack. A stack, last in, first out, a queue, first in, first out. So, as we looked at a stack vertically, we can look at a, a queue horizontally. It's a typical array. There's our array of numbers. The only thing about a queue is it has a front and a back. If I want to add values, where do they go? They get added to the back. If I want to take them away, they get taken away from the front. If I want to add the value 86, it gets added to the back. If I want to take away a value, I, the only value I can take away is number 31 at the front. That's the rule. That's how it works. So it's the same as an array, except we add a few rules on our constraints. And our constraints are add to the back, take away from the front. And if we think about a printer queue, for example, when I'm printing stuff, if there's three of us in a room and we all print a, a Word document at the same time, whoever pr clicks print first, that goes to the printer queue first, and that gets printed first. Whoever clicks print second gets done second, whoever clicks third gets done third. So the order in which you join the queue is the order in which you're served. So printers have queues connected to them, which means if I'm taking in multiple jobs, I do them in the order in which they arrive. First come, first served, or first in, first out. So if we want to implement a queue using an array, we create an array called queue. The maximum length of the queue is max size, and unlike a stack where we only have one pointer stack top, we need two pointers or two um, variables. One is called head to represent what, where the front of the queue is, and one is called tail to represent the back of the queue. We could give these any names at all we want. We could call the array banana, we could call the maximum size of the variable dustbin, we could call the front of the queue chair, and the back of the queue coat, but we're giving the variables sensible names so that we're able to um, understand exactly what's going on. But nonetheless, the names have no special meaning. You know yourself when you create a variable, you can give it any name you like. But we, we tend to want to give variables good, good names that help explain what's going on. So let's look at a simple simulation of a queue. Let's say the head is at the zeroth element and the tail is at number three or the fourth element. If I want to add a value on, that means I add it to the tail. So that means I add, goes to, from number three to number four. I can add another value on, and it goes from number four to number five. And then if I want to serve or take care of a value, pop a value out, as you'd say in a stack, then we take it off from the head. The problem with this is if I add another value on to the tail, it's full, then I can't add anything else to the queue. So uh, the, the maximum size of the queue limits exactly how many values you can add on. Um, once you've reached the tail of the queue, there's nothing else you can do. You can't take values off the back, so then it's full once you've added that number of values on. And no matter how, value, how many values you take off the head, it doesn't matter. It's still full once it's, the tail has reached max size plus one. So once we've gotten there, that's it. The queue is full. There's nothing else we can do. So that means if I'm creating a queue using an array, generally speaking, I make the array massive. Or I can do some other tricks as well. So let's have a look at the code. If we want to implement the queue, as we said, we declare an array called queue, a head and a tail, and a max size. Let's look at it in pseudocode. Uh, queue is seven in this case, it's the same kind of thing as the stack. The maximum size is seven. In this case, we've created a queue that's already full. 
the head is pointing to zero, the first element of the array, and the tail is pointing to six, which is the seventh element of the array. So the queue is full. This queue, we can't add anything onto the end of it, but we can take elements off the front of it. So what methods or modules will we look at? We'll look at checking if the queue is full. We'll look at checking if the queue is empty. We're looking at a module to add a value to the queue. We'll look at a module to delete from the queue. And we'll look at a module just to clear the queue and make it empty. So let's look at if the queue is full. Checking if the queue is full is exactly the same principle as checking if, the, if a stack is full. If the tail value plus one is equal to the max size, then it's full. So if I've got a, if I add two more values in to, into this queue, then tail is pointing at the number six. So if six plus one, which is seven, which is equal to the max size, that means I can't add anything else into the queue. Here's our code. We have, a, we have two ways of doing it. We create a Boolean value called full. If tail plus one is max size, then full is true, else full is false. Uh, and we'll return the Boolean value full. Of course, we can do this more short, briefly, briefer, by just saying return tail plus one equals max size. So if tail plus one equals max size is true, it'll return true. If tail plus one equals max size is false, it'll return false. So that's checking if the queue is full. Now, we'll remember this, we'll note this, unlike a stack, the queue is full if the tail has reached the end. I could have deleted a lot of elements off the front, but nonetheless, if the back of the queue has reached the maximum size plus minus one, that's it, the queue is full. There's nothing else we can do with it. How do we check if the, the, the queue is empty? Well, if the head and the tail match, if they're in the same position, then the queue is empty. So let's say I take the head of the queue and that moves back one from zero to one, take another element off and it moves from one to two, take another element off, then it moves from two to three and then I take another element off, moves from three to four. If head is pointing at four and tail is pointing at four, that's it. The queue is empty, it has no values in it. So we can't take any more values off. How do we do that? There's two ways again. If head is equal to tail, then we return a boolean empty is true. Otherwise, we return a boolean is false. And we just return that. And as you'd expect, we can just do that by saying return head equals tail. So if head is equal to tail, then it's true that the queue is empty. If head is not equal to tail, then it's false that the queue is empty. How do we add a value to the queue? If we want to add a value to the queue, there's two things we do. We move the tail pointer back by one, and then we write the value into where the tail pointer is pointing to now. So as we can see there, the sixth element of the array, which is array element number five, has an empty slot after the number 53. So if we want to add the number five in, let's say we'll add the number 66 in, we move the tail pointer back to be pointing at element number five, and then we write the number 66 in there. Let's look at the pseudocode for it. Add to Q the value n. We check, it's important to check if the queue is full. So if the queue is full, we can't add a value n. So we say print queue is full, else what we say is add one to the tail and write into the queue array at location tail the value n. So whatever value we're sticking in, let's say 66, 66 gets written into the array location of Q that tail is pointing to at the moment. How do we delete something from the queue? As we know, we add to the tail, but we delete from the head. So if we want to delete from the head, what we're saying is find out what value is at the head at the moment. It's number 31 as it happens, and then add one to the value head. So head goes from zero to one, from one to two to two to three, three to four. So both pointers move in the same direction, they both move backwards, if you know what I mean. So how do we delete from the queue? We have a variable called n, and we check if the queue is empty. If the queue is empty, there's no point trying to delete a value from it. So we say queue is empty. Otherwise, what we say is 
save whatever value is in the head at the moment in a variable called n, and then add one to head, which will move it back one. And then we'll return the value n. So we'll definitely get a value for n one way or another. It's either going to be q head or zero. How do we clear the q? Well, clearing the q is simple. We just set the head and the tail to be at the same value. If the head and the tail point to the same value, then there is no values in the q. For fun, we can set um, the tail to be minus one, and then set the head and the tail to, to be set the whatever value is in tail, which is minus one, equal to head. So head gets minus one and tail gets minus one, and that's cleared the queue. That means both are minus one, so when we add another value on, it'll be written into the zeroth element or first element of the array, and so on and so forth. So that's queues implemented as an array. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.